I bought into the hype, and this is how it's going. From Glow Recipe to potentially owing Fenty Skin an apology, to new launches from the Inky List to the Ordinary to what's going on with Jeffree Star that I haven't shared all of the details of, and even Winnie Harlow's K-Skin sunscreen line. I have bought into the hype, I've spent way too much money on it, and we're gonna discuss whether or not it's working out. So first and foremost, Glow Recipe. They launched their first sunscreen, and this happens to be the Watermelon Glow Niacinamide Sunscreen. This is all the rage. Everyone's freaking out about this because this really is the first K-beauty inspired sunscreen that is fully American made. Glow Recipe is a K-beauty brand that is made by some former executives in the beauty industry, but it's actually made in America, whereas a lot of K-beauty sunscreens use different filters. So Glow Recipe tried to create this sunscreen that has no flashback, that works for all skin tones, that is apparently supposed to give you the most amazing glow, and everybody's going off about it. But because it was American made, it had to go through like two years of testing, and on on top of that, it has sunscreen filters that are only available here in America. Now, I have been testing this out and a video is coming for you that actually shows you how this wears on the face. But let me tell you, when the hype started hyping, I started noticing and I started applying. I will say that this gives you a glow like nothing else, but it's so lightweight that it doesn't feel greasy. If you love the look of a greasy sunscreen, but you hate the feel, this is for you. Now, the one thing about it is that it has niacinamide as well as sun protection, so it's actually really Really good for things like hyperpigmentation or post blemish redness or purple marks. This is really excellent for that and it does smell phenomenal. But the niacinamide does tend to pill up if you use this with other products. I found that if you use this alone, it's really good. And especially because it has niacinamide in it, you don't necessarily need to use another product underneath it. But every single time I've tried to use this over a vitamin C serum or even with a nice hydrating essence, this pills up. But on its own, it doesn't. It's very, very strange. Um, and I feel like I have to exfoliate my forehead. But I will continue testing it and I will put it in my eyes and I will tell you how it goes. If you're not subscribed, stay tuned for it. But yes, the hype is happening and I did buy into it. Oh, also someone said that theirs expired really quickly. Mine doesn't expire until 2023. I feel like that's plenty of time because I use two fingerfuls of sunscreen. Maybe that's why it's pilling up. <laughs> now the Ordinary did something super spiffy special and they launched a salicylic acid anhydrous solution. What does anhydrous you ask? Anhydrous means without hydration or without water. And this is a without water solution with salicylic acid. It's meant to exfoliate, it's meant for acne prone skin, and it's in this nice little bottle. And this challenges their more light colored bottle that is their salicylic acid solution. Their regular salicylic acid one is also 2%, but it got ripped off the market for quite some time. I actually thought they were discontinuing it, and I thought it's because, you know, people online were experiencing burns. If you look it up, there are some people who said that they use salicylic acid and like they started to get chemical burns on their face. And this isn't a chemical peel, so that shouldn't have happened. Now the question is, was that user error? Were they following directions? Or was the original salicylic acid product just too much? I do not know the answer, but I thought that they were ripping it off of shelves because of that. And I stocked up on them because of it. And I felt very, very sad because my acne prone scarred skin can definitely tolerate it. Not only did they shock, surprise, and delight me with the fact that they did not discontinue that product. They actually restocked that product and they launched this. This anhydrous solution is for those who love oil. And maybe they also like some exfoliation or they also love a little bit of acne protection since that salicylic acid really does deliver. And if you remember, BHA, salicylic acid, is oil soluble. So this actually seemed like a very authentic fit. The closest thing that I can think of this is actually this one from Dermalogica. Now I like this one a little bit better because this one has jojoba oil, salicylic acid, and a retinoid. This is great for acne and anti-aging. I feel like this is much leveled up. If this is like a 10 of hearts, this is like the ace of diamonds. Or is it the ace or the king or the queen? I think the queen is the best, but I mean, poker players will say otherwise. King, queen, whatever. This is the shit. This is a budget version that is still really good. Now, the main difference is that this has squalene oil, not jojoba oil. Squalene oil is the hydrogenated version of squalene, which is what our skin naturally produces, as well as shark livers and olives, fun fact. But this is a really, really interesting solution that can burn if you use it improperly. Now, before you just take this and run with it, I will say that I'm comparing this to the old salad salicylic acid solution that they've had for freaking ever. I want to see if they've changed that other one at all. And I want to compare them side by side to help you make the best decision for your BHA love and skin. But yeah, the ordinary, all the hype, the hair care as well. I bought into the hair care. You saw that happen. So far, my scalp has been liking it. It's a little greasy, but their hair serum and their conditioner has actually been pretty good. And for eight doll hairs, 
a follow-up with my testing experience is coming soon. But The Ordinary wasn't the only brand that launched some new stuff, no, no. The Inky List also jumped on the hype, and one of the things just made me be like, what the f*** are you doing? And the other one, I'm like, ooh, hi, baby, how are you? Let's start off with the what is going on here. This is the Omega Water Cream, and when I picked this up, I thought of some drugstore products. I also thought of some very high-end products that have Omegas in them, and when I actually went to test the product and swatch it on my hand, I was kind of surprised. I was like, oh, this is a very basic moisturizer. And when you look at the ingredients, yeah, there's some oils in there, some omegas, but there's mainly niacinamide. Like this is a niacinamide moisturizer. I looked at this and I'm like, it's, it's not a bad product, but I'm just like, why did you call it an omega cream? And when I put it on, it's like, it's a niacinamide moisturizer. It's lightweight. It's a really good addition to the Inky List lineup, especially since their peptide moisturizer, the one that pumps down is currently my favorite. This one I feel like is a really great addition for something a little bit more gel-like. But when I look at the ingredients and like, what it does and how it feels on skin. I'm like, did they make a niacinamide moisturizer and then decide to just rename it for some reason? Because like what's inside doesn't necessarily match a ton. I mean, it does have omegas and it does have oils in it, but like it doesn't feel like what you would expect an omega cream to feel like. And you know, there are some Biosansi products. There are some drugstore products that really do omegas well. And when I compare this, I'm like, this is a water cream. This feels more like the Neutrogena water cream than anything else. And it doesn't feel omega-y or oily. And maybe that's the point. Like it's supposed to go on like water, but as you kind of work it in, like it just, it really actually feels wet on the skin. Not hydrating, not creamy, but it ends up just feeling wet. And then it soaks in and it's a good product, especially for the price. But is it my favorite? No. The main ingredients are water, dicaprol carbonate, glycerin, niacinamide, propendiol, betanine, polygosyl 4, like give me the omegas. The glycosphignolipids and the glycolipids are like halfway down the ingredients list. I feel like this could have used a different name. It's not a bad product, but I did buy into the hype and I was slightly disappointed. Now, where I was not disappointed and actually flabbergasted with delight is this. I was not expecting to love a hyaluronic acid cleanser. Hyaluronic acid is a humectant. Of course, holds onto water. We know this by now, but it normally works in a lot of products that you kind of leave on the skin, right? One of the shortcomings of hyaluronic acid is it has a very short half-life, meaning that once you apply it after six to eight hours topically, it stops working as well, so you should technically reapply it. But also hyaluronic acid can be drying for some people. Well, I was not expecting it to work this well in a cleanser. The Inky List has one of my favorite cleansers, the salicylic acid one, but that can be very drying on skin. They also have the Oat Cleansing Balm, one of my favorites, which can be a little bit too oily on skin, or it's very good for dry skin skin if you don't do a double cleanse. They also have the oil and water one that you mix, which is a work of art, and it is an amazing makeup remover, but I feel like they don't have like a really good, normal, middle line cleanser. They have like super oily, super dry, but nothing in the middle. This has answered our prayers. This is silky, this is nourishing, this is absorbable, this is non-stripping, and this feels so freaking good on the skin. It does say it's best for everyone, seriously, and this is the first time that I'm like, wow, product packaging? is not lying to us right now. Hydrate skin and remove makeup. I haven't tested a ton on makeup. I'm going to continue doing so. But this is basically a very good glycerin-based cleanser that's like hydrating and does the job. The sodium hyaluronate and basically hyaluronic acid is, you know, not at a high concentration. And that's because if it were, uh, this product would be a mess. And I don't even feel like the hyaluronic acid is really penetrating the skin all that much, but it works as a humectant and it really gives this product really nice body and the way it goes on the skin. I have fallen in love with this. And if you're looking to play around with hyaluronic acid without fully committing, oh, this is it. This is like a beginner's guide to hyaluronic acid. Honestly, if you're worried about it drying you out or if you don't know how to layer it because it can be such a thin key ingredient. This is not a disappointment, and I felt like this is exactly what the Inky List as a brand needed to add to their cleanser portfolio. <laughs> now, some products that I don't have in front of me are the Jeffree Star Magic Make Me Melt Cleanser. When looking at Jeffree Star's skincare launch, I was actually quite surprised, quite delighted. The technology that went into the packaging is actually really phenomenal, and the products themselves don't look bad. But did I buy into the hype? Yes, but also no. I buy into the hype based on the ingredients list, but am I buying into the hype with my wallet? No, and I have a confession to make. Um, the Jeffree Star video that I actually filmed was about an hour and a half long. It was very long, it went into lots of detail, and it addressed my previous predictions of Jeffree Star versus what was actually launched versus a very neutral, very non-biased review of the ingredients, and then speaking about my experiences meeting Jeffree Star in person, speaking about my experience growing up, listening to his music, and going to Warp Tour with him, and 
even some of the controversial things and apologies he's made and um, why I wasn't going to purchase the line because of those. Now, the final Jeffree Star video, as you saw, was like 25 minutes. A lot of that was actually cut out and left out of the video. Now, I get to work with amazing people who help, you know, sometimes make decisions. And that was a decision that I didn't fully know was happening. And then when it launched, I was like, ooh, I'm very happy that this video is completely neutral. But I kind of started rethinking it because some of the controversies are very important. You know, the person is different than the product. But if you want to know the story of both, I feel like that gives a really well-balanced opinion. And um, some of my experiences in person with Jeffree Star, as well as some of the things that happened in the past that have been apologized for, do impact how I view the line and whether or not I decide to purchase or to use the line. And so at this point, have I physically bought into the hype? No, <laughs> and I'm not going to. But it also comes with a little disclaimer that, yeah, that video, there is a lot more about it that just hasn't been shared. And the question is, do I do it? Do I not? Is it a waste of time? How do we feel about this? I'm just, I'm going back and forth, okay? Sometimes I get decision fatigue. I don't know if that's an actual thing, but yeah, there are many untold reasons as to why I am not buying into the hype, even though I will give credit where credit is due. Someone worked hard on that line. It does have alcohols in it, but somebody worked hard on it. And the packaging looks phenomenal. And the strawberry is actually straw burying itself into the corners of my mind, making me second guess many of my decisions. But that being said, the hype has not physically been bought into. And I think that it was important to address here. Now when it comes to Riri, I might owe Fenty Skin an apology. Not really an apology, but the Fenty Skin line disappointed me upon its first launch. The first three products they launched with I thought were amazing for people who were just starting skincare. But for a skin intellectual like me, I was like, these don't have a lot of the actives that I'm looking for. Like this isn't for my acne prone skin intellectual skin. It's more for a beginner. And celebrity skincare lines in general. I'm like, why are celebrities slapping their faces on things? Well, Fenty Skin, again and again, has come out with these launches that really show someone is putting in the work. Like, the packaging is beautiful, a lot of it's eco-friendly and recyclable, the ergonomics of it are fantastic, and late last year they launched this pre-show glow. This is a very, very small bottle, but I did buy into the hype, and I also got the hand cream and the body cream. I have to say, the more things they come out with, the better they get. This is specifically the pre-show glow with glycolic acid. This is actually something that I feel like is made for my acne prone skin intellectual skin type. This provides exfoliation. I have been testing this and I'm going to continue doing so. I do feel like the little reusable cloth is kind of weird and kind of unnecessary, but overall, this is a cute little travel size, powerful punch you could use before a big event to basically give your skin almost like a chemical peel without fully committing to a chemical peel since it's basically an exfoliating cleanser. This foam up nicely. It can irritate the skin if you're sensitive. And I have been very impressed by some of these more recent launches from Fenty Skin. Even the hand cream was phenomenal for me. Fenty Skin has been impressing. When I first saw the line, I was like, here we go. Another celebrity cash grab. Probably better than all of the other celebrity cash grabs, but still not the best. But like with these new launches, I'm paying attention. I'm buying into the hype. I have to say, I don't know if it's Fenty Skin. I don't know if it's Kendo. I don't know what's going on, but someone over there is working hard and it's showing. <laughs> Summer Fridays also came out with a new product that has really blown me away thus far. This is the Dream Oasis Deep Hydration Serum. And this is kind of like what I wanted the Omega Water Cream to be. I'm still going to be testing this out, but this beautiful little bottle, it literally reminds me of like the Malibu Coastline. The entire Summer Fridays line is pretty fantastic. They have a lot of good products, but this serum is almost like the result that you ask for from a moisturizer, but in serum form. You can really easily layer this under a sunscreen. You could just wear this on your own if you wanted to, and it really is a dream oasis for the skin. This has squalene, this has oat, this has ceramides, and we see a lot of ceramides in certain moisturizers that are normally really thick. We know that ceramides are what are made naturally by our skin, and they make up about half of the outer layer of our skin, the epidermis's stratum corneum, to be exact. But we don't often see ceramides in a serum form. Ceramides are fantastic, mind you. The only serum that comes to mind right now is the Coco Kind serum. They have like a ceramide one. And then Pacifica also has a vegan ceramide line. But this is so nourishing to the skin, especially if you are dealing with a damaged skin barrier. This also has a bunch of amino acids, which again, can hold on to water. They can be nourishing to the skin. Depending on how deep they penetrate, they might help with cellular signaling to stimulate other changes in the skin, potentially from rebuilding a skin barrier 
barrier to helping with collagen or elastin production by stimulating those fibroblasts. We love those fibroblasts. And it really does deliver on its promise of being a weightless jelly serum that is oil-free. So if you don't want the oils, but you want hydration, like this is an oily skin's best friend. If you're oily, but dehydrated, because yes, you can have oily skin, but still be dehydrated. And I'm pretty sure this is fragrance-free as well. It smells like it. I think that when I looked at the ingredients, I didn't see any sorts of fragrance in it. This is fantastic. And if you have a damaged skin barrier or you're looking for hydration that doesn't make you overly oily, Summer Fridays is coming through. I bought into the hype with this one and I am so far not disappointed. Now, when it comes to the hype, another brand that has launched is Winnie Harlow's K Skin Line. This is a celebrity sunscreen line that is blowing my mind. And did I buy into it? Absolutely. And has it arrived yet? At the time of filming this video? No. I actually purchased two products from Winnie Harlow, but for some reason, my order online says that I only got one product, and I don't know if it's because it's sold out, or maybe I just thought I added it to cart and I didn't. When I looked at this line and kind of assessed it, it actually looks super legit. The formulas look fantastic. It looks like they would apply nicely, like the ingredients list are great. The question is, does the actual formulation hold up to the marketing and the advertising and the ingredients lists? And then when I actually dug into the company, it looks like this was created not with a parent company and not like, you know, as some celebrity cash grab. It looks like this was done from scratch, even a next level up from what Fenty Skin did. Because I do believe that Fenty Skin was one of the more authentic celebrity brands that we've ever seen. But at the same time, Fenty Skin is owned and really created by Kendo, who also does Kat Von D and Ula Henriksen. And again, great brands. And I think that's why Fenty Skin is turning out to be so good. But it's like, okay, at the same time, that's what we expect from a kendo. I want to see the brands that almost like Nikki Tutorials or Jeffree Star are built from the bottom up because that takes hard work and dedication. And you know what? I think that that's what happened with K-Skin. And although I haven't put the sunscreen on my face, I'm going to rub it in my eyes. I'm going to see if it makes me cry. I'm going to put it all over my body and I'm going to take it to the beach and I'm going to see how it works. But I did buy into the hype and I spent like $40. I thought I spent 80, but I spent like 40. And I want to try their other face stuff because they have a tinted sunscreen. And I do want to try their body stuff, although that has not released yet. It's coming soon. And I'm like, yeah, coming soon. I'm waiting. <laughs> I also bought Florence by Mills and Item Beauty, and um, we're gonna talk about those in another video. <laughs> Would you buy into the hype as well, and did you find the hidden kitten in this video? If you did, make sure that you tell me what timestamp, and I might just pin you to the top of the comment section, Mr. Baleen style, which, if you don't listen to those strange, dark, and mysterious YouTube videos or podcasts, might I recommend. They're a bit more sinister than skincare, but you know, if you're like one of those goth emo kids that just grew up to love pimple popping, you might enjoy. <laughs> Overall, always remember to be beautiful, both inside and out, out, reapply that SPF as soon as it gets here. Freaking K skin shipping delays. And I cannot wait to see your beautiful, intelligent face in this next video. <laughs> I love you guys. Bye.